evening and welcome to another edition of Newsline Live, of course, coming to you live and direct from our News First studios here in Colombo. We've got a very special guest here today. He is the Joint Cabinet Spokesperson, Do Minister, Dr. Ramesh Patirana. A, a very good evening, Doctor, and welcome to the show. Very good evening. Thank you very much for inviting me for the program. Thank you very much, Doctor. And uh, on part of the general public, there were many questions that were uh, sent in once we put up a post uh, announcing your arrival on the show, of course. Um, Dr. Ramesh Patirana, the biggest amount of questions that we received uh, were based on the vaccination program that is currently underway, and rightfully so. People are worried about uh, how they can secure a, a dose of this vaccine. Uh, one of the biggest questions that we received is the fact that uh, the elderly in Sri Lanka, there are still members who, in the elderly community in Sri Lanka who have not received this vaccine. Now, is the government aware of this concern, and what are you doing to address it? Uh, yeah, very much. Government is very much aware of the need of the vaccine, and we also thoroughly believe that we have to vaccinate the whole country, uh, starting from age 18 upwards. But uh, there was a scarcity in relation to supply of vaccines, as you and as you are aware. Uh, now, uh, the selection criteria for the initial set of vaccines that we received was to distribute those vaccines amongst the western province. Among western western province, also we selected the most congested areas, depending mm -hmm. on the disease prevalence. So we started vaccinating in those areas and uh, that we started during the second wave. Now we have seen results because number of cases reported from those areas have come down gradually. Hmm. Now we have uh, spread our vaccination program to the other districts including Gol, uh, Kurunagala, Kandy uh, and uh, Ratnapura districts. Hmm. Uh, with the availability of vaccines, perhaps we will receive another 2 million doses in month of June we should be able to cover more areas. So when we come to the other districts, we again we have selected Gramin Ladari divisions depending on the severity of the cases. So there is a selection criteria which was laid down by the epidemiology unit of the health ministry. Hmm. So depending on that, we are selecting GN divisions. In that GN division, we are, uh, we are vaccinating everyone above 18 years of age. It's, uh, since it's, it's actually with the side Above of 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 upwards, yes. So, uh, but as you correctly mentioned, there is a need to vaccinate elderly people. They are the more vulnerable group. So we uh, request, uh, uh, given the backdrop of the severity of the spread of the disease, we request uh, to take utmost, utmost precautions as uh, laid down by the health ministry. Hmm. But we should be able to vaccinate a greater number of uh, people during next couple of months with the availability of the vaccine. So, Dr. Ramesh Patirana, if I understood correctly what you said, uh, now the priority is no longer the elderly population, but it's Gramin Ladari divisions that are at high risks. Yeah, that's right, because uh, we have seen significant number of uh, uh, younger population also getting affected. Hmm. So, they also develop complications within a very short period of time. So, taking that into consideration, so we are giving priority to elderly populations as well, but we have to cover entirety of the population about 30 years of age. So, uh, Doctor, moving on, uh, another concern, uh, again relating to the COVID-19 pandemic in Sri Lanka, was uh, the issue that uh, we know that there is a shortage of the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Covishield vaccine, and the mix and match has still not been approved by the World Health Organization or even uh, local expert committees. Uh, so, against such a backdrop, people who received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine back in February are beginning to get concerned as to if they will receive the second dose in time and the complications that might ensue if they do not, uh, what's the stance Actually, of the government? Actually, the government has spoken to many sources, including many uh, leaders of the different countries. By uh, personally, his excellency, the president, Gota Berajapaksha, mediated in speaking to these people to see mm -hmm. whether we can source that extra one million uh, doses of vaccine to ensure that we give the second dose to them. Uh, fortunately, WH World Health Organization has um, claimed that uh, immunity would last for from starting from first day to six months mm -hmm. at, 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 at some level. So afterwards, during that period of time, we can provide that uh, second dose. Mm -hmm. But we are trying our level best, but our efforts have not been successful so far. This, mm -hmm. is, this has happened because of the fact that initial agreement the government reached with the uh, World Health Organization is um, through the COAX program. We are expecting to get 4 million doses of vaccine, out mm -hmm. of which we received only one point, circa 1.3 million doses. So we had gone ahead uh, vaccinating the first dose, but uh, at the at the midterm only we realized that we did not receive, we were not going to receive sufficient stocks for the second vaccine. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are aware of the situation. We are trying hard to get the secure the 
second dose, we are hopeful, we are keep our fingers crossed that we should be able to secure that 1 million dose uh, from uh, somewhere in the world. Now, we are talking to different parties and also we are talking constantly to AstraZeneca and also to Serum Minister of India and mm. uh, His Excellency the President has personally spoken to the Prime Minister of India as well. Mm. Uh, and with that backdrop, we uh, are hopeful that mm. we will receive the second dose to vaccinate. Dr. Ramesh Pathirana, what really compounds uh, the stress on the people who have already received the first dose of the vaccine and uh, they, are under, they, they do know that the second dose of the vaccine is in short supply and Sri Lanka is not in possession of sufficient stocks. But what really complicates their emotional response to this whole situation is the unfortunate fact that people with connections in Sri Lanka, as you said, the government is aware of the irregularities in this vaccination process, people with connections have been successful in securing the second dose of the vaccine, getting the uh, second jab of the vaccine. And at the end of the day, inevitably, as uh, the entire population would know, it's the lower strata, the poor, poorer classes in Sri Lanka that don't get this vaccine. And besides of the concern that they have of not receiving the second dose, they're also frustrated that the rich and powerful have triumphed again in this matter. No, it's not the correct information actually. So if you take, if you look at the larger picture, so vaccination program started in most congested areas of Colombo, starting from Colombo 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, where a high risk population was living. It was mm. not offered to people at Colombo 7. You, are mm. cor you correctly know that. Right. This was given at the congested areas. We're not where speaking the just Colombo 7, doctor. No, let me finish. So yes. it was offered to the lowest Mm. People or the people who came from lower strata or the social structure, if you could correctly remember, mm. this is not offered to people at Colombo 7 or to people at the Colombo Municipal Council or goal or richer areas or goal mm. or candy or matra for that matter. This is offered, but uh, there could be certain elements, mm. those who are using this medicament or the vaccination in, mis in mischievous manner. But government is not responsible for that. We have given the complete authority to the health authorities to ensure mm -hmm. epidemiology unit is the one which is overlooking. It's at their hands. It's starting from that distribution process, medical supplies department. It goes to the MOH areas, the other relevant health mm -hmm. authorities. It, it's the responsibility of the health authorities, not the responsibility of the minister or the government to do that. It's they, they set up the criteria, they select the area, mm -hmm. they distribute. It's them who are handling that. But I, I agree partly. Mm -hmm. you, you suggested something, but it's not proven properly. Mm -hmm. Probably here and there, you know, that, that could have happened in the country. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't totally reject that. Right. But there's no evidence. But government's motive, starting from the day one, was to uh, vaccinate mm -hmm. the most important areas. There, we didn't take the social structure into consideration. Right. Dr. Ramesh Prathirani, you said that the responsibility has been handed completely over mm -hmm. to the health authorities, and uh, rightfully so, because they are the people who are spearheading this. But when you spoke about the irregularities in the vaccination process, uh, well, when we go out to report on these matters, we see the plight of the people. And um, there are people who are, who are angry that they have not received the second dose of the vaccine. And there is uh, considerable evidence, even uh, on the part of certain medical associations in the country, strong arming their way, using their power, using their influence to secure this much needed second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, when you speak about uh, the health authorities being solely responsible for the vaccination drive, uh, there is a bit of a contradiction there as well because we saw some ugly scenes taking place, especially in areas like Moratua, where political figures uh, came and intervened in this uh, process of vaccination and caused a huge stir there. So on that front, uh, isn't there a political involvement? Well, there had been few issues pertaining to that. Uh, I said about the distribution of the vaccine and selecting, uh, you know, most important groups. But political leaders and also the other social organizations also get involved in relation to the, the, you know, the, the program that was organized to distribute and uh, at, at the village level. There, there had been certain issues, but it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the, the, the political authority only. So hmm. It's not solely the political authority, but also the other village structures also took part. Civil servants, Gramaniladaris, and also the certain times this uh, some of the development officers, they also took part in organizing that event. Hmm. They are, we, we are gradually minimizing the issues pertaining to these kids and the unrest of the people. Hmm. Say, for instance, we started this program in Goal and also Mathur and also Kurunagal and other divisions. Now, we have set up a system. Yes, hmm. we mediated to ensure that people do not... Uh, spend a lot of time in the queues. So we allocated timelines. We have uh, we have learned from the mistakes that we have 
uh, seen and experienced in the western province so we are uh, you know gradually correcting the mm. mistakes that we have made and we are allocating timelines so thereby we reduce the uh, the time that they stay in the queues and also we will ensure that they get the vaccines properly mm. and go home as quickly as possible um, uh, Dr. Ramesh Pathirana, another issue that uh, has been raised by our viewers regarding the vaccination drive uh, and also, again, pertaining to the irregularities, uh, is the vaccinations that took place uh, at uh, a certain leading temple in, uh, in Colombo. And um, there were people who flocked there, and like you said, people gathering is not yeah. a good thing during the COVID-19 pandemic. There was a huge ambiguity as to who is getting the vaccine. There are, uh, again, people of influence uh, going their way in. And yesterday, we received a communique from the Minister of Health herself uh, saying that this was not organized by the health ministry. Is this a depiction that there are you know, multiple heads at the health ministry or multiple heads running this entire vaccination drive? I think uh, Health Minister Honorable Pavitra Devi Vanyarach issued a very clear statement pertaining to that. I think the backdrop uh, which led to this uh, unfortunate situation was in relation to the second dose of COVID, uh, the COVID shield vaccine, I suppose, because the, uh, the few people were injected with uh, COVID shield vaccine at that particular premises some time ago, so people were expecting the second dose again. So given that backdrop of social pressure, I think the organizers have requested the health ministry to give certain doses of Sinopharm vaccine. So people are queuing up there, but uh, it was uh, very clearly explained by the Ministry of, uh, the Minister of Health, Minister of Health rather, mm -hmm. that it was not guided or informed by the health ministry. So we are very sorry what had happened uh, at that particular place. And, but it's very clear that it wasn't uh, communicated properly with the health ministry. Dr. Ramesh Pratinana, one final question on the vaccination drive. Are you in a position to give the general public of Sri Lanka a specific date or at least a time frame saying at least by this time we will have the second dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine available, not to everyone in the country, but to at least the people who have received the first dose? No, it's a million dollar question actually. <laughs> At this particular moment, I wouldn't be able to give any uh, specific answer to that. But on our way also, I was questioning from the chairman of SPC and also we were to, I was talking to some of the relevant authorities of the health ministry hmm. to see whether we can, because this is the question a lot of people ask. Hmm. So, but there is no confirmation as such, but we are talking that we are dealing this at different fronts. Hmm. So we, all of us are trying our level best, you know, we are talking to our friends, Dr. Hmm. Friends, say for instance, those who are living abroad, we are Using all the, yeah, all the personal connections, all the personal connections. Yes, hmm. uh, it, it, the president is speaking to somebody, and also uh, the prime minister is hmm. speaking to somebody. Hmm. All the health, health authorities are talking to different uh, people, different hmm. connections. Everybody is trying to explore the possibility of securing that vaccine. So it's very important for all of us. But uh, we didn't get a confirmation on a date. Yes. Dr. Ramesh Patharan, do you believe it would have been better if the government, um, when they received the initial stock of 600,000 vaccines, or a little bit more than that, um, divided it into, vaccinated the first batch, and kept the second batch for the second dose? No, everything happened under unforeseen circumstances because initially World Health Organization promised us 4 million doses of vaccine. Under the COAX. That's un under COAX. That's why it had happened. So, so we, we entered into that formal agreement, Sri Lanka is one of the countries that entered into formal agreement at the first place. So we were very confident that we were going to receive, but unfortunately, un under unforeseen circumstances, you know, the, the, the contract manufacturer for AstraZeneca in India, Serum Minister of India, were under a lot of pressure. Hmm. So there was a rising number of cases, significant number of cases were reported from India. India went in turmoil with this pandemic. Mm. So, and also the, the manufacturer, the, the Serum Minister of India, the owner, you, uh, you saw him, he, he mm. fled the country. So they couldn't meet under those circumstances. Indian government prevented exporting or any mm. vaccines to the other countries. That's why our country was stuck. So at that time, we didn't know we were not going to receive the second doses. So government in uh, good faith, only we had gone ahead and uh, vaccinate. If we kept that um, you know, few doses of vaccine, Without uh, vaccinating people, you know, you'd have come out and said, you know, look here, you have extra stock of, of uh, vaccines, you're not uh, vaccinating people. So this has, this has happened. So under this uh, pandemic situation, uh, things have, uh, you know, unfolded in a way that we did not expect it to see. Mm -hmm. So it's a very unfortunate situation, but government is trying its best to mm -hmm. ensure that we secure those uh, vaccines. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramesh Vathirana. We'll cross over to a short commercial break. We'll be right back on the other side to discuss more on the current situation in Sri Lanka. Stay tuned. You're watching Newsline. Live.
Welcome back. You're watching Newsline Live. We are receiving a flurry of questions uh, to be posed to Dr. Ramesh Patarana, of course, uh, but we do have a limited time frame, so I'll try to get in as much as possible. Uh, doctor, my idea was to go into a, a different area of uh, decisions that were reached by the cabinet uh, before the break, but however, given the, given the massive number of questions that we received on the vaccination drive, I will pose this question to you. Uh, speaking of the priority list, uh, there was a question raised that uh, in many other countries, people with non-communicable diseases uh, such as cancers and so on and so forth, have also been prioritized. And these people are more vulnerable to this virus. Have they been prioritized in Sri Lanka? Well, um, epidemiology, uh, the epidemiology unit of the health ministry is uh, actively looking into that aspect as well. So my personal opinion is that we, uh, we should prioritize them and also there are segments which need to be prioritized in relation to uh, the, the considering the fact that uh, disease spreads among certain communities and also certain types, they, the people with comorbid conditions they develop complications quite easily. So considering that, I think the epidemiology unit will have a new uh, way of thinking in relation to this vaccination program. I also personally believe there has to be a new way of thinking in relation to the vaccination program. Dr. Ramesh Patarana, one final question on the COVID-19 vaccination drive. Uh, this question came in from one of our viewers, and the question goes as such. I received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine on the 19th of March. If I don't receive the second dose of the vaccine in time, who is responsible? Well, actually, the government will have to take the responsibility. We do not run away from the responsibility, but we have done everything in the good faith. And also, as I uh, you know, explained earlier, we were, uh, we were to receive 4 million doses of official vaccine. That's why we have gone ahead. But the good news is the WHO yesterday claimed that the initial immunity will last uh, from day one to uh, six months. So during that period of time, the second dose could be given. Hmm. And other uh, good news is that most of the doctors claim that after the first dose, there is a significant level of immunity Mutant retains in the body. So unfortunately, if somebody develops the disease during that period of time, the chance of them developing the complications would be that much lower. Mm -hmm. That is something good. So mm -hmm. he is he's better protected than a person who had not received any vaccination. Mm -hmm. So uh, we again, as we uh, you know, explained, uh, you know, lengthily, mm -hmm. so we are trying our level best to secure the second vaccine. Hopefully, we will receive some uh, doses of vaccination uh, during next few, few weeks. Dr. Ramesh Patharana, the second set of questions that I will pose to you is about the daily lives of the people. It has been significantly disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Also, some people are a little bit unhappy that uh, the travel restrictions that have been imposed, uh, it was previously announced that uh, travel restrictions will be relaxed on certain days for the general public to go out and, and get their goods, but however, that decision was subsequently reversed. And it's been one and a half years that Sri Lanka has been suffering with the pandemic, since the pandemic hit the world, actually. And during this time period, has there been a proper mechanism set up for vegetables, food, essential goods to be delivered to the general public or to be taken to a place where the public can come and trade and get their essential supplies just to get by, just to live? Actually, during first wave and the second wave, that mechanism was very well established. So people had a very decent mechanism of uh, receiving goods. But what happened during the third wave was even the distributors were a little reluctant. We were trying to get them motivated to go to different places and distribute. We had the mechanism installed, but unfortunately, people did not come forward in significant numbers because they are also afraid of you know, contracting the disease. Hmm. So because of that, there is a lacuna in relation to, yes, I agree. But the government is trying, trying its level best to ensure that it secures the, you know, basically from, you must have seen from the economic development centers, the government mediator, the agriculture ministry mediator, the ministers personally mediated in relation to purchasing and also distributing. But I still understand there is a, a deficiency in relation to distribution, but there is a general hotline set up to uh, inform and also the, uh, the, the government agents and also the additional government agents or different, different districts. Hmm. They are also doing their bit. If you contact, if somebody has not received uh, the distribution services, if uh, they, they say any lack of supply for food hmm. and other essential items, they can directly contact them so that they would be of help. I think we are also getting a lot of calls in relation to that. We are also trying to mediate. Uh, so the, the representative of the people and also the government uh, servants, uh, they are to support if there is any delay in delivering essential goods. Doctor, uh, there is a question that I received uh, asking, why doesn't the government allow the private sector to import the COVID-19 vaccines? Well, it's, uh, it's a very, very important question, but most of the agreements were reached through the World Health Organization. 
So they are only advising uh, at this particular moment government to government purchases. So a lot of people, there had been a lot of inquiries in relation to whether the private sector can import. We have also given that green light to some of the, some of the people who approached us, the health mm -hmm. ministry for that matter, whether they could import Covishield vaccine. Yes, we have said that you go ahead and get it. But at, the, at that time, we requested them uh, to, to you know, forward two documents. Mm -hmm. One thing is to get the no objection letter from the main manufacturer. Say, mm -hmm. for instance, if they are importing, they have to give us the certification from the AstraZeneca. Mm -hmm. They are the main Understood. manufacturer. This is coming from the proper supply. Mm -hmm. And also, the second one is this, uh, they should provide uh, the registration for the temporary uh, registration of the temporary manufacturer. Mm. If this is uh, this is under uh, this is a temporary measure, mm. there are a lot of uh, the factories set up to uh, you know the produce the vaccine mm. under emergency situation. But the main manufacturer should approve the local manufacturing or the contract manufacturers' uh, premises and, mm. and their manufacturing facility. If they can provide those two certificates, no objection letter from the manufacturer and the mm. license of the temporary manufacturer, government should be able to give the green light. But so far, nobody has, uh, nobody has been able to provide those two documents to government. Right. Otherwise, we have under these circumstances, because of this COVID shield uh, issue, mm -hmm. we have given that green light for people to come and give that uh, documentation to us. In that case, government can provide green light to import even the private sector people. But it's not available to the private, private sector also, sector it seems. Yes. It uh, but doctor, we've received another question uh, regarding <coughs> the timing of importing these vaccines. It is of utmost important that we get our hands on as many vaccine vials as we can as soon as possible. However, when the vaccine was initially introduced and the World Health Organization gave the approval, uh, certain senior ministers of the government said that we don't need the vaccine right now, we will get it when we need it. Uh, then there were other tonics and other heavenly cures that were also promoted by certain members of the government and of parliament. Um, do you believe that the government should have imported these vaccines or focused their attention on importing the vaccines sooner? Well, if you look into the WHO website, uh, the immediately after the WHO World Health Organization uh, approved emergency using of this vaccine, Sri Lanka was among the first 10 countries which had started, which had, uh, you know, the place orders with the, uh, with the World Health Organization. But unfortunately, we did not receive most of the influencing countries and the richer countries of the world mm -hmm. use their power, the strength financially and otherwise to ensure that they get their stocks. Mm -hmm. But we had to vaccinate we them had five, six times over. Five, their five, six times. It's very unfortunate, unfair situation. But at the same time, let me remind we ordered. We have, we have one, of the, one of the first countries to order. We have done that. And also there are uh, 45 countries to date who have not received single dose of vaccine in the world. Hmm. So, uh, you know, quite contrary to that, we have at least received hmm. 3 million doses of vaccine so far. Hmm. So what happened initially, uh, we explained um, in detail what had happened in relation to 4 million doses we have initially ordered. Hmm. One thing was that, so hopefully we will get uh, the doses with this current Sinopharm agreement. We are expecting to get uh, at least to cover, uh, we, we, have, we have placed orders for 17 million doses of vaccine. Hmm. We are trying to uh, vaccinate at least 60 to 70 percent of the population by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. That's our program. We have uh, we have placed the orders already, but also on the same time, in a sideline manner, I would say I don't know who claimed uh, the, the Ayurvedic medicines are better than vaccination. It's it's you it's don't a, know who claimed it. Yeah, no, basically <laughs> there 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 must have been people, but at the same time, I must mention. But you that don't know who they not, are, doctor. There is no proper mechanism to uh, justifiably mm -hmm. say or to you know the prove the efficiency of the traditional medicine, that's a very unfortunate situation. A lot of people had taken that they claim to be having certain good things. I'm not going to justify that, but it's very unfortunate at a time like this that the, the Sri Lankan Ayurvedic system or the, the, the indigenous medicine it it doesn't have that scientific proof hmm. to go ahead and show the world to the, at least to show the Sri Lankan people this has this benefit. That's a very unfortunate situation, but scientifically, government has taken all the initiatives which, which were possible at that time, we have placed the orders, but we did not receive the vaccine. That was a very unfortunate situation. Dr. Ramesh Patharana, we're in the final few minutes of this show, and I'll try to just squeeze this in a bit, because it is important that the general public of Sri Lanka mm -hmm. have faith in Sri Lanka's legal system and the measures that have been imposed by the government. Of course, I'm speaking about the quarantine regulations. However, unfortunately, uh, we see certain politicians, certain high-ranking police officers flouting these quarantine regulations 
out in the open. Yesterday, uh, there was an incident uh, reported uh, the mayor of Kurunagala had openly flouted these regulations. Um, so I'm not speaking about the measures that have been taken on behalf of the police, because the police is an independent law enforcement body, and um, cabinet has only so much of oversight over that. But as a political party, the Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna came into power campaigning on this promise of one country, one law. So keeping in line with that promise, would you be open to uh, open at least a disciplinary inquiry into the actions of, of these politicians who are flouting quarantine regulations? Of course, yes. It's basically the I saw government's uh, the rather the uh, police spokesperson. Hmm. He claimed openly that uh, the the punitive actions would be taken against everyone who had you know broken the laws but of the country. But as the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, doctor. Would, well, would your party take disciplinary uh, action against this uh, member course, who has flouted quarantine of regulations? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. Of course. Uh, disciplinary actions would be taken against the person hmm. who had done, who had committed those you know, violations of the, uh, the laws of the country. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramesh Pathirana. And uh, that's an end to a very interesting, of course, Newsline show. Thanks to our very special guest, Dr. Ramesh Pathirana the Joint Cabinet Spokesperson. Thank you very much, Dr. Ramesh Patirana. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, I believe the general public would have uh, got some understanding on the measures that are being taken by the government uh, regarding the vaccination drive and other regulations imposed in Sri Lanka to curb the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, it is very important that all of us stay vigilant about the current situation in the country uh, and take every necessary precaution and follow guidelines that have been issued by the health authorities to curb the spread of this pandemic. Thank you very much to all our viewers out there for tuning in. Until we meet again, take care and God bless.